Hey guys, today we get to look at some new cards and we have five Outer Dragons, which is always neat. And we get to look at another one right now. One, a green, a white, and a blue. Flying Vigilance, whenever a creature with Defender enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Each creature you control with Defender deals combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power and can attack as though it didn't have defender since the dawn of time we've had cards like animate wall and alpha which made walls semi-playable and this is kind of the same type of deal next regal blood lord free a white and a black flying at the beginning of each end step if you gain life that turn you get a 1-1 one, one black bat creature with flying. We are definitely going to see a lot of lifelink abilities in black and white. Poison Tip Archer, two a black and a green. Reach, Death Touch, whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. Pretty good card. Sky Rider Patrol, two a green and a blue. Flying at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay a green and a blue. When you do, put a plus one plus one counter on another target creature you control, and that creature gains flying until end of turn. This is going to be a very good card in Limited. It has an ability that is consistent that you can sink your mana into each turn, and then it also gives a creature evasion, which is important. We see a reprint. Lick, which is the Lich, Lick, <laughs> which is the probably the worst reprint we're going to see in the set. Chaos Wand, free, four, tap it, target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card. You may cast a card without paying its mana cost. Pretty cool. Then put the exiled cards that would have been cast this way in the bottom of its library in a random order. Interesting card. Uh, split Flame, 2 and a red. It deals 4 damage to target creature. If a dragon entered the battlefield, you may pay 1. If you do, return it from the graveyard to your hand. It reminds me a lot of... What is that card that's banned? It goes really well with the other card. That burning... Grove of the Burn Widows. Uh, Punishing Fire. It reminds me a lot of Punishing Fire. Which is very good because it's banned. Sarkon Fireblood, that is a very spicy planeswalker. Free, you only you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Very Tibble-esque. Plus one, add two mana of any combination of colors. Spend that mana to cast dragon spells. So you can get huge acceleration with this card. In minus seven, create four five five dragon tokens worth flying. Pretty awesome. I think the plus one is definitely, I mean, it's like a mini dark ritual if you consider the, instead of giving up a card. So in dark ritual, you spend one black to get free black, but you're really just gaining two black. In this case, you're gaining two and you don't actually have to play a spell. Goblin Taskmaster. Other goblins you control get plus one, plus one. Sacrifice a goblin, destroy a target artifact. It's kind of meh. Lena, selfless champion, four double white legendary creature, human knight. Whenever it enters the battlefield, create a one one white soldier token for each non token creature you control. Sacrifice Lena, creatures you control power less than Lena gain indestructibility. So that's pretty good. Instant speed. We are going to see a lot of these knight cards go up. There is a knight lord, it was reprinted in Dragon's First Knights. Its name, it was also in the Walmart promo as a foil, the free pack promo. It gives Knights indestructibility for half the cost. So yeah, that's a much better card. A Valiant Knight, free in a white. Other Knights you control get plus one, plus one. Free in double white, Knights you control gain double strike. That's pretty impressive. Psy Master... Two and a blue. Whenever you cast an artifact creature, uh, artifact spell, create a 1-1 colorless artifact. 
two sacrifice two artifacts draw a card we have the reprinting of bane fire bane fire is a classic and it is definitely a way to it was back in the day bane fire was much better because there's so many counter spells going on and this was the only way to finish off your opponent in red one with the machine free and a blue draw cards equal to the highest converted mana costs among artifacts you control kind of a cool draw mechanic um not something that i would play but this is a very good core set it has everything that you really want dragons more dragons elder dragons as planeswalkers that are relatively cheap to cast it has really good reprints like omni science and most importantly it has a crucible right i don't actually own a crucible i think i sold my i crucible by mistake but so i'm really excited about the crucible because it should be much cheaper than 80 dollars. it's not going to hold 80 dollars when a whole box will probably cost 80 dollars eventually all right moving on to the next card we have fell specter oh specter free and a black flying whenever it enters the battlefield target opponent discards a card whenever an opponent discards a card that player loses two life not bad for an uncommon. One white for a Johnny's welcome. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield un under your control, you gain one life. Angel of Dawn, four in a white. Flying, whenever Angel of Dawn enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain vigilance. It is a free, free. So it's good. I mean, it's good to have angels, demons, and zombies, and all this cool casual stuff at common. I've always appreciated it when they put the super casual stuff not at the mythic rarity because, you know, I like that stuff too and I don't want to buy a bazillion packs of this. Overall, a really well done set in terms of the balance of the mythics, the rares. You have the really good mythics. You have the really okay rares. Magister Scepter is definitely one that you want to keep your eyes on in terms of MTG Finance. All right, moving on to some of the other cards. Cleansing Nova, free and double white. Choose one, destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. So a five mana wrath spell is already playable in standard, especially for a control deck. The other artifacts and enchantments, that's kind of just bonus, I guess. Uh, Emily of Safekeeping, two. Whenever you become a target of spell ability, opponent controls, counter to that spell or ability until unless its controller pays one. Creature tokens get minus one, minus oh. So this is gonna hose creature tokens quite a bit. And I don't know how I, I guess they're really thinking that history of Bonalia and all these other token generators that they will be too much. Even the goblin tokens are really dominating right now. So it's like an anti-meta card. Might see some play in the sideboard. I am excited for that giant bear. I wish that giant bear made two twos. I feel like that's how you want to do it. Corset is a good set because it references a lot of stuff from Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited. We have the same creature types. Um, well, we didn't have pirates back then, but we have Departed Deckhand. Whenever it becomes target of a spell, sacrifice it. It can only be blocked by spirits. Two and a blue target creature you control can only be blocked by spirits this turn. So, yeah, pirates. You know, don't sleep on pirates. So if you want to know what to pick up right now for your ED8 stuff, pirates, knights, like they're really pushing knights. That knight is one of the most beautiful knights that I remember. It's one double white. It's a two two. It gives all knights plus one plus one, and it gives them indestructibility. It should tell you how powerful that card is compared to like the six mana version of it, which is much weaker. But uh, next we have Graveyard Marshal, double black, zombie soldier, two and a black, exile a creature card from your graveyard, create a tap 2-2 two, two black. So yeah, it's not bad. Dryad of something. One in a green, tap it, take 
look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may review it and put it into your, your hand. So it's just like Sinbad. I used to play this card called Sinbad. It was one in a blue. I think it was originally Arabian Nights, but I didn't have that version. I had the Chronicles version, the white bordered version. And this is Sinbad. And I can tell you Sinbad's not the worst. You'll hit about one in every three times. But when you do hit, it's an extra card draw. And you can always play this at the end of your opponent's phase. Therefore, you can need a block. It's a good blocker. It's got free toughness. Anyway, let me know if you guys are hyped about the core set. Bye, guys.